Level 1 Euro style aquariums come in an exciting array of sizes and designs. The lighting is built into the hoods and the filters are tucked neatly out of sight in the cabinet below. It's most important to choose the correct size filter for the amount of and size of livestock you want to keep. Consult your Aqua One dealer on the best size for you and your fish. It's so easy to set up your new Euro style aquarium. Just assemble the cabinet, tank and light hood and connect your canister filter. Let's have a look at your Aqua One filtration. Thanks for purchasing an Aqua One canister filter. There are several Aqua One canister filter models which all have the great Aqua One design, easy to set up and to service. This will show you how to unpack a filter, set it up and connect it to the aquarium ready for use. Make sure you refer to your detailed instruction booklet before you go ahead and set up your canister filter. To begin, lift each of the four lid housing clips and push upwards until they release. Now remove the lid by lifting and removing the housing off the canister. Be careful not to lose the gasket o-ring which sits in the recess of the housing lid. Next, remove the filter pad and take out each of the media containers using the retractable handles. Remove the filter media from each container and if they're in plastic wrapping, remove that wrapping and replace them into the container tray they came in. Once unpacked, rinse the filter media well to get rid of any dust or debris. Other types of Aqua One filter media which can enhance the performance of your filter are also available and are recommended if placing a large demand on the filter by keeping your aquarium highly populated with fish. Depending on your Aqua One filter, refer to the instruction booklet for the correct order of the media placement. But generally, the coarser materials are placed towards the bottom of the filter to prevent premature clogging of the filter. The water is pumped down from the tank into the channel between the trays straight to the bottom of the filter. This is why the coarser materials should be placed at the bottom to first catch the large solid debris, ensuring an even flow right through the different mediums and finally trapping the smallest of solid waste in the finer filter material at the top and return the cleaned water to the aquarium. The bio balls provided are best used in the bottom of the canister, even under the containers. This is very common to give lots of movement around the medium and they're easily removed for cleaning. The ceramic noodles can be placed on the bottom of the first and second tray. Helpful bacteria will grow on these noodles and break down the waste from your fish. The blue or black sponge is coarse sponge and can be placed above the ceramic noodles in the container. If you've purchased optional Aqua One carbon bags, place them into the top container. Lastly, place the white pad over the top container. To ensure that the containers fit back into the filter, don't put too much in them. When placing the containers back into the filter, make sure you line up the discharge pipes so they slot into one another. Make sure that the sealing O-ring is correctly positioned on top of each filter basket. Once the canister filter lid is correctly positioned on the canister, press the lid down and latch and secure the lid housing clips. Next, attach each piece of tubing to the ends of the valve and tubing tap connectors like so. Push each tube over the fitting and tighten the plastic collar by screwing it into place to ensure a proper seal. Fit the valve and tubing tap connector onto the fittings of the pump lid housing and hand tighten each of the tap connectors by turning the plastic collar. Connect the tube which is fitted to the tubing tap connector labelled out to the pump housing on the filter which is also labelled out. Now connect the tube labelled in to the pump housing on the filter which is also labelled in. Place the prepared filter into the lower cabinet or floor beneath the aquarium in the position you want it to stand when the aquarium is running. Use a safety tray to collect any unforeseen dripping water. 
take out one of the two long plastic pipes which bend around at one end and push the strainer onto the long part of the pipe. This will be the intake pipe and will pass water from the aquarium into the filter. The strainer is very important to keep large objects from entering the power head, especially your prized fish. Position the intake pipe at one end of the aquarium and attach it to the glass using two suction caps, like so. The intake pipe will be connected to the tubing attached to the filter housing labelled in. Determine the length of tubing required, making sure there are no sharp bends or kinks in the tubing which could block the flow of water. Cut the tubing to the required length and attach it to the intake pipe. The other long plastic pipe which bends around will form part of the outlet pipe and will return water from the filter to the aquarium. There are three styles of outlet pipe you could assemble. The difference between each is purely aesthetic and you don't really need to worry about which one will function better. You may simply attach the elbow to the short part of the pipe and put it in the aquarium, like so. The elbow will return the water in one horizontal jet into the aquarium. Alternatively, you can attach it to the spray bar. Fasten the spray bar to the aquarium with two suction caps. The spray bar should be installed just under the water with the holes facing slightly up or just above the water surface with the holes facing slightly down. The spray bar will disperse the water along the length of the aquarium, creating a different visual effect. Make sure the end of the spray bar has an end cap. The third option is to attach the spout to the short part of the pipe, like so. Once you've made your selection, place the outlet pipe in the opposite end of the aquarium from the intake pipe, if possible, or at least aim the outlet away from the inlet. The tube connected to the filter housing labelled out will be connected to the long part of the outlet pipe. Determine the length of the tubing required to make the connection, but make sure there are no kinks or bends in the tubing, because that could reduce water flow, then cut the tube to the correct length. Now attach the tubing to the outlet pipe, pushing it firmly over the seal rings. If you haven't already done so, it's now time to decorate your aquarium. Start by placing your rinsed gravel at the base of the aquarium. Unless you're planning to grow live plants, it's recommended you keep gravel to a minimum. Gravel is a better aquarium substrate than pebbles because the large pebble size allows excess food and waste to fall through the grains and build up on the bottom of the aquarium, then it rots. Gravel is finer and allows excess food and waste to land on the surface where it can be consumed by scavenging fish, keeping your aquarium much healthier. When filling the aquarium, it's important that you don't fill the tank too high with water to ensure your aquarium doesn't overflow once you add the fish and the ornaments. Aqua One has a huge range of air operated and resin ornaments to suit any style of aquarium, which are a perfect refuge for your fish and create a lot of interest in your aquarium. Aqua One also has a massive range of plastic plants and copy corals that add colour and beauty. Also available is a large range of Aqua One aquarium backgrounds, which can neaten up and enhance the look of your aquarium. Next, put in your air stones and connect the air line to the air pump. If you can, try to place your air pump above the water level of the aquarium. If you're placing the pump below the water level of the tank, make sure to use an Aqua One check valve. It is possible for water to siphon back down the tube and may damage your pump, which is not covered by the guarantee. Every electrical cord should have a drip loop to stop water running down the cord from the tank into the equipment or electrical power outlet. Next, place in any plastic plants and ornamental decorations. Aqua One has an extensive range of creative decorations to suit any aquarium style. Any synthetic ornaments and plants should be rinsed in tap water before putting in the tank. Remember to add Aqua One water conditioner to your water 
to remove chlorine, heavy metals and other chemicals which will damage your filter and could harm your fish. Use the directions on the bottle to work out how much water conditioner to add to your water. Now we're going to fill the filter with water. Don't plug the power switch into the socket at this point. To fill the filter with water, turn both valves on the tap connectors to the on position. Next, detach the outlet pipe from the tubing and apply a strong suction with your mouth to the open end of the tubing. Temporarily, place the open end into a bucket, then wait for water to travel through the canister of the filter and tubing into the bucket. When the inlet pipe and the canister are completely filled with water, we say that the filter is primed and is ready to be switched on. Switch off the outlet tap and allow the water from the outlet tube to drain into the bucket. Now place your thumb over the end of the tubing to prevent any leftover water from dripping out and reconnect the tube to the outlet pipe. Now turn on the outlet tap and plug the power cable of the canister into the electrical socket. This will instantly turn the filter on. The filter will often make a sucking sound when it's first turned on, which is basically caused by excess air being removed from the top of the filter. Don't be alarmed, this is completely normal. Remember, never turn the filter on unless it's full of water. Running a filter without water will cause it to overheat. The canister can also be filled using the priming cap. This priming cap feature is not in every filter, so read the instructional manual for your specific filter. Once the filter is running, double check the filter and all the fittings are watertight. If a small leak appears, empty the filter, disassemble just that area and reconnect it. It's always a good idea to use a drip tray under the filter to prevent spillage. Now plug in the heater and the air pump. Close the lid and switch on the light. Double check each item is functioning properly. Check the temperature on the thermometer. If the water is less than 25 degrees, make sure the light on the heater is on. The thermometer should always be placed at the opposite end of the tank to the heater for the most accurate readings. Your aquarium is now ready for fish. However, it's safer to run your aquarium and filtration for three days before introducing a few fish. Oh, and if you've got a salt water set up, it may take a little longer. So it's best to ask your local Aqua One dealer or grab a copy of the DVD, Your Instructional Marine Aquarium Guide. Take a few minutes to check out the other important chapters. They'll cover maintenance and care of your new aquarium. Enjoy. To make sure your filter works optimally, it's recommended you clean it every month. To clean the filter, unplug the power cord and turn off the taps. Next, remove the tap connector and tubing from the filter housing by unscrewing the plastic collar. Move the canister to a wet area where it can be cleaned. Lift each of the four lid housing clips and push upwards till they release. Remove the housing lid with pump head, ensuring the gasket seal is still attached and remove the media containers. Rinse the biological media by placing the containers in a bucket of water out of the aquarium. Don't rinse the filter media in tap water because the chlorine can kill the bacteria which are responsible for the biological media functioning. Rinse the mechanical and carbon filters in aquarium water and return to the canister. It's recommended that the fine mechanical walls replaced with a new piece each and every time and that the carbon is replaced monthly. Put all the media back into the canister in the same order. Also clean the pipes, tubing, impeller and housing with an Aqua One pipe cleaner. Replace pump unit and reposition the canister under your aquarium. Fill the filter with water before switching it on using the priming method explained earlier. When the filter is full of water, plug the power cable back into the socket to turn the filter on. Never fill the filter using tap water. If the tubing is clean, you can clean the filter leaving the tubing attached, 
as long as you make sure to turn the tap connectors to off before disassembling the filter. When you're done, the filter should gravity fill automatically when you turn the taps back on. If the water pump seems to have lost pressure or gets a bit noisy over time, the impellers need to be replaced. Old impellers will often appear worn or scratched or cracked. We recommend servicing the filter monthly, but if the filter gets really dirty between cleans, consider cleaning it more regularly. If your stock levels are stable and the filter's quite clean, you can safely leave more than a month before having to clean it again.